National League relief pitchers with number of home runs given up, 12. First and third, two out in the ninth. Fastball away, ball one. You can see how deep the outfield is. Mitchell very deep in left, Butler in center. The double, of course, to prevent the tying run, which is at first base. One ball and no strikes. Grace with a triple and a scoring fly ball. Away, ball two. And on deck, Andre Dawson. It looked as if Leverage had to be getting ready for Grace, but when Downs fell behind to McClendon, Craig's hand was forced. 2 0. Oh. Ball three. Now one pitch away from loading him up, and Kelly Downs sweating it out in the giant dugout. Louis Salazar and company, hoping that they can repeat the miracle of the 20th of July. 3 0. Oh. In there. Three and one to Mark Grace. All right, we taking one pitch. Take the three and oh, maybe get the tie and run to second. He'll be swinging here. And he walked in to load the bases for Andre Dawson. The tying run, Lloyd McClendon in scoring position at second. Holding a third is. Salazar come up. Downs first walk and it's only the second walk given to the Cubs tonight. The other one went to Dwight Smith in the third inning. The Cubs have left seven men in six innings. In fact they failed to leave a man only in the second inning when Salazar led off with a home run. They left five in the last three innings and Jeff Brantley is throwing in the giant pen. Ball one and for the third inning in a row the leadoff man has gotten aboard Walton in the fifth Dunstan in the sixth McClendon here in the seventh. Now back one and one to Mark Grace Mark Grace hitting 692 he is 10 for 15 excuse me Mark Grace is 9 for 13 and Will Clark is 10 for 15. One ball, one strike. Right side of the infield, wide open. Thompson shifting to his right, and Clark on the bag holding McClendon. Hit in the air the other way. Mitchell is there with Butler, and it's Mitchell. So Mark Grace, who had a scoring fly ball and a triple, flies to left. Boy, he looks like he's saying he wanted it back, too. Remember last time up, he got the breaking ball and crossed up the defense, hit the triple into right center. That time, nothing but hard stuff from Kelly Downs away. An expression on Grace's face seems to say that, boy, I'd like to have that back. Remember that hanging curveball that Ryan Sandberg had earlier in the game popped it up. Seems to be the same thing Grace is saying. Mmm. in the air foul Mark Grace trying to get under it reaches in goes in after it will come up empty another great effort by Mark Grace again doing battle with the auxiliary seats just down from the giant dugout Charlie Williams right on top of the play Boy, are those two first basemen in this game something to watch? He just triples. And there's a drive into right center, and the ball game is all tied up. That's going to go to the fence, and the Hawk goes flying into second base in a 4 4 tie. Jerome Walden singled and two outs later Grace triples and Dawson doubles. 
Dawson got a pitch up and out over the plate last night against Lacoste and hit it just about the same spot. Here, Garuff leaves the pitch up in the middle of the plate. Dawson just drives it in. You know who's most happiest, the happiest person in the in the ballpark? Greg Maddox, sitting in that duck in the clubhouse inside and knowing he's off the hook. Mentally, it's just a big relief. Certainly didn't want to go back to Chicago, knowing he's 0-2. He is dead off the. Two down, and the batter will be Mark Grace. And every time Grace comes up against Scott Gerelt, you have yourself a major confrontation. And Terry Kennedy is going out to the mound to talk to Gerelt. There's a scouting report. Likes to inside out the ball. That means get the pitch on the inside part of the plate and take it to left field. And try to pound him in on his hands. He doesn't strike out much. A great ratio of almost 90 base on balls and just 42 strikeouts. So he's going to make contact. The Giants have been trying to make him put it into play to left field. And he promptly bangs it into right center for a base hit. It gets by Sheridan. And Walden is around third. He will score. Grace is on his way to third. And Robbie Thompson will run it back to the infield. Pat Sheridan tried to backhand it on the dead run and came up with a glove full of empty. And the Cubs now are the tying run 90 feet away. It'll be a triple. One of the things you have to do from a pitching standpoint is pitch the way that your defense is set up. Here they throw the breaking ball, a pitch that Grace can pull. Butler in center field all the way around in left center. That ball really dead in the alley. Sheridan tried to cut it off knowing that Smith has excellent Fastball popped in the air back of first and foul ground. Grace trying to get under it and makes a swipe at it and catches it. What a fine play by Mark Grace. Tough to see the ball against that light sky. He was running out of territory, took one look at the VIP seats and made the play. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Fielder. Ground ball, perfectly positioned as Dunstan. He threw a sinker to Grace, but Mark stayed with it. Two down. We mentioned that last night. Dunstan has a habit of gripping the ball across the seams and throwing sliders and sailors, and Grace does a truly remarkable job of handling those throws that come at such great velocity with all kinds of movement on them. Mark says he'd rather try to catch him than hit them. To swing the bat against Scott Gerelt. That's a successful at bat for Dwight Smith. So the two out walk gives Grace yet another chance. Mark hit that line drive at Pat Sheridan in the first inning and picked up the RBI barely as Sandberg was able to just beat Sheridan's throw in the drop tag by Terry Kennedy. So Grace is still seven for ten against Scotty Gorelt. With two out, it's a question of what Zimmer wants. Does he want to keep Will Clark on the bag, or does he want to turn Dwight Smith loose? Smitty stole nine during the regular year. Short lead. Scott Gurels, the National League earned run average leader. Cubs leading two to one in the third. And there he goes. The pitch is a strike. The throw, not in time, backed up by Uribe. So Zimmer obviously would rather have Smith in scoring position than just lead the hole on the right side. One of the things Zim said that he was going to do in Chicago, right before game number one, was run against Terry Kennedy. A tough pitch to throw on. Terry kind of came around the side. Here's an interesting point now. You know all about how Grace wears out Garelt. 
Yet Andre Dawson is not hitting on deck. Are you even going to bother to pitch to him? Right handed or right hander or from the on deck circle? A no. ball. Ball and a strike that count. Free pass. Go to first base so I know right where you are. Well, they're pitching to him. That breaking ball stayed up. One ball, one strike. Gray's hitting 727. Breaking ball punched on the ground to Uribe, who sets for the throw. High throw. Coming to the plate is Smith. The throw, he is out. Will Clark does it again. Uribe had plenty of time, just a high throw. Earl Clark does it every time. He comes up looking and has the expectations. Fielder. Ground ball, perfectly positioned is Dunstan. He threw a sinker to Grace, but Mark stayed with it. Two down. We mentioned that last night. Dunstan has a habit of gripping the ball across the seams and throwing sliders and sailors, and Grace does a truly remarkable job of handling those throws that come at such great velocity with all kinds of movement on them. Mark says he'd rather try to catch him than hit them. And before it's over. Pat Sheridan, a ground ball to Grays. Mark takes it to the bag, so one pitch and one away in the fourth inning. In case you weren't with Great play by Thompson. Time called, and there's a few words. Sean Dunstan and Will Clark. That's the first time we've had any semblance of disagreement between the two teams. After all, with Roger Craig and Don Zimmer so close, it appeared to have spread to the teams. But now, suddenly, something was said, and Dunstan was furious. Zimmer is saying, what happened? Tell me. It probably stems from the member of the play at second base when Clark went into second. Sandberg turned around and looked at, and said, told the umpire, look at Clark. He was pushing up in the air, interfering at second base. That might have been what it's about. There's two very competitive individuals. They'll be left alone over there, too, if they can clean house. Dunstan is furious. Will Clark trying to quiet him down earlier in the game, and it had to be unintentional. Remember, Will Clark unintentionally stepped on Dunstan's hand. Now, let's see. I wonder if we have Dunstan going down the line at the bag. I know we were watching that fine play by Robbie Thompson, but you wonder if something happened as Dunstan was approaching the bag. Jose Martinez trying to calm Dunstan down, but he is furious. He's arguing with everybody. He's arguing with the umpire, his own coach, arguing with, look at Clark. Clark is still in there, and Zim trying to make amends here. You don't want to lose your shortstop. You know, things were so nice between these teams when the Giants were at Wrigley Field. Don Zimmer's wife, Suth, passed out orange and black corsages to all of the Giant players' wives. I mean, this, this really was the friendship games. And suddenly there, a little emotion, and apparently it's by the board. Maybe a misunderstanding about something. Mm -hmm. They became friends again all of a sudden. Well, you don't know if it's the end of it, though. You can see the vein in Clark's neck popping out. This was when Clark inadvertently stepped on Dunson's hand, but I'm sure this has nothing to do that with it. Totally unintentional. Yeah. Just I'll an just, accident. I'll... Oh, and one. On the fists, hit down to Grace, a busted bat, the out at first, and the fence is down again off the. Decided to hold him at third with Grace coming up. Grace seven for ten against Gurels, including a home run. And in the first game, 
went three for three with a home run against Scotty Gurrell. And you may remember one of the great single at bats in this series when Scotty Gurrell and Mark Grace went head to head for 12 pitches. 2 and 0. Oh. And as they have done, they're pitching them away, playing them away. Kevin Mitchell way over in left field. Butler on the left field side in center field. If Grace is going to hit it out, he's going to have to hit it out to left field. That's generally what you can tell by looking at the outfield defense. Down and away, 3 and 0 oh, the count to Mark Grace. And on deck, Andre Dawson. Dawson with one hit last night and it came in the first inning to drive in two runs and he's waiting for a chance to come up with a full plate three and oh and they let him swing line to right Sheridan for the catch Sandberg is coming to throw he scores Close play, Terry Kennedy unable to hold and do a great throw by Pat Sheridan. Take another look. Just a slight double clutch by Sheridan, a good throw. He just didn't quite get a handle on it on the first go into the glove. And a good slide by Sandberg right underneath Kennedy at home plate. This is not an easy play for Sheridan. A very tough right field, sun field. You can see Sandberg coming down the line to go right underneath them, right into the bag. A good call by Jim Quick at home plate. Even if he had held on to the ball, I believe he would have been safe at home plate. But that was an excellent play by Sheridan right field. Remember, they let Mark Gray swing three balls and no strikes. The Giants appealing, claiming that Sandberg.